This is Dr. Ornbrink of Appalachian Wellness, We're talking to you today about the Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, also known as SIRS. We're going to give a, just another brief overview of what this disease process is. This is the basic disease process behind such illnesses as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, uh, multiple sclerosis has been linked to this as well. 25% of the population at large is genetically susceptible to chronic inflammatory response syndrome, SIRS, as described by Richie Shoemaker, MD. He's a family physician who practiced in Pocomoke, Maryland. He's the individual of genius who elucidated the complex pathophysiology behind SIRS. He has a phrase, genes load the gun, exposure pulls the trigger. These folks with, the, with this uh, gene may have worse effects after exposure to a toxic environment, yet given sufficient exposure intensity and duration, anybody can suffer some ill effects. But those that are genetically susceptible are certainly going to be the sickest, and they tend to get sicker quicker on re-exposure. Essentially, anything that causes an inflammatory cytokine storm, cytokines, you can think of them as like uh, hormones that are very, very short acting and work only in the immediate area around where they're being uh, released. They're, they're the ones that will bring white blood cells to the source of the infection, for instance. So anything that causes this cytokine storm in a genetically susceptible individual can set the syndrome into motion. As I said before, CIRS is a host response, not a dose response, and those who have subsequent exposure get sicker quicker, secondary to having had a primed immune system after an initial exposure. There is a way to treat SIRS. The Shoemaker Protocol is extremely complex with a very steep learning curve. Uh, survivingmold.com is Dr. Shoemaker's website. It's a treasure chest of information from those who may be afflicted with SIRS. SIRS manifests itself in numerous organ systems. It leads to great suffering. Anybody who's had uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, etc., can tell you how bad the suffering is. It also causes premature death. Ed McMahon, the publisher's clearinghouse, the Johnny Carson Show, had a water leak in his home. It was fixed, but the water damage was not fixed. Mold broke out in his house, and apparently Johnny uh, should have picked better. I'm sorry, Ed should have picked better parents. He had the gene. And he died prematurely after great suffering from SIRS due to that broken water pipe and the improper remediation that was done. SIRS can also be triggered not only by toxic black mold, but by Lyme disease, fisteria, blue-green algae, cyanophyta, red tide bloom, ciguatera, which is a toxin found in larger reef, tropical reef predator fish. Other exposures even include the certain vaccines, such as those who treat Lyme disease and uh, HPV, human papillomavirus that causes cervical cancer. Uh, our troops that are giving ex lots of vaccines before being deployed to theater uh, are all given all kinds of different vaccines. And since 25% of them are susceptible, uh, there's a good chance that they're gonna have some sort of problems. If it's a vaccine and it's a one-time dose, it might not be as bad as say, living in a home with mold in it and just being constantly bombarded with the toxins that are gonna be present in that environment. For the immune system to function properly, there must be an on switch when you're attacked by some type of a foreign germ or whatever. But for control, there's also got to be an off switch. The population of T lymphocytes that are on the off switch are known as the CD4 plus CD25 plus group. Uh, this is a test that uses flow cytometry to detect them. This is the normal off switch, which would engage upon threat resolution or neutralization. Okay, the, the damage has been done, the infection has been contained, we can go you know, back to just monitoring now and stop fighting. Unfortunately, that switch is broken and it becomes an autoimmune situation in which your immune system is attack, attacking you. And this is happening all over the body, which is why you get so many myriad complaints and problems. I mentioned that this is a complex disease, and here's a simple overview. Simple, right? So basically, the body acquires biotoxins from either toxin-producing organisms or from food, water, bug bites, what have you. You can see the large blue arrow in the upper right, left-hand corner. Normal people, they remove these biotoxins. Okay, the white blood cells come in, the macrophages eat it up, they, you know, present the pieces of this thing to 
uh, other B cells which form antibodies against it, T cells which go around killing it directly. Uh, in most folks, these biotoxins are removed from the blood by the liver attached to the immune system. They're broken down, passed through the bile, excreted harmlessly. People don't have any kind of problems and they live happily ever after. For those who are biotoxin HLA susceptible, however, their surface receptors, the C-type uh, toll, rece toll receptors, C-type lectin receptors, mannose receptors, and others found in the dendritic cells. These are white blood cells that reach out tentacles like arms and grab the uh, problematic uh, antigens. Uh, they release cytokines. These cytokines then get to the hypothalamus where they can cause damage to the uh, MSH, VIP receptors, and others. Uh, leptin receptors are also damaged. This causes the fat cells to produce more leptin, which leads to obesity. We've all heard people who are overweight. No, it's it's not. You know that I'm not eating much. And indeed, you look at them. They're not. Eating, they're not eating much. They're exercising, and they're still very obese. Well, leptin is usually a culprit there. This cytokine storm also gets to the capillaries in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, these capillaries attract white blood cells, leading to restricted blood flow, lower oxygen delivery to the tissues. Okay, this stimulates normally VEGF, which would say let's build more blood vessels so we can get more oxygen to these blood cells. TGF would also be present, which can change transforming growth factor beta one changes uh, the types of blood of tissue cells, often into scar tissue. Now you've got, however, with this this attack, you've got more TGF beta one. You've got VG, VEGF is actually decreasing, it's not rising the way it should rise. You get fatigue, muscle cramps, short of breath, uh, erythropoietin and VIP can help this. The TGF changes the cell types, it especially hits liver, lung, and skin. So you may see changes on somebody's skin when you look at them. They may have like flaky, like a, an eczema type thing going on. Immune system symptoms. Uh, they could develop inappropriate immunity, such as antibodies to gliadin, which is the wheat protein. If you eat wheat, then you get lots of muscle aches, pain, fatigue gets worse. Uh, the immune system can also be affected. Cardiolipins may form, which cause abnormal blood clotting, can cause miscarriages in women who are pregnant, and that sort of thing. Uh, T regulator cells that shut off the immune system can become pathogenic or disease causing. They don't work right. C3A is a complement product product is found where there are bacterial membranes, you know, think of Lyme disease. C4A is just from toxins in general, and it's associated with low blood perfusion through the capillaries, which means low oxygen delivery. <clears throat> High levels of cytokines produce flu-like symptoms, headaches, muscle aches, fatigue, unstable temperature, difficulty concentrating, and more. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> High levels of cytokines are associated with increased levels of other immune response related substances, including TGF beta 1, matrix metalloproteinase 9, interleukin 1b, platelet active, plasmid, plasminogen activating inhibitor factor 1. MMP9 <clears throat> develops inflammatory elements from the blood to the brain. It gets across the blood brain barrier. So it hits brain, tissue, nerves, muscles, lungs, joints. It combines with PAI1, increasing clot form formation, which causes further arterial blockage. Coag negative staph, Marcon's, forms in the nose. Okay, this also splits MSH, dropping the MSH levels, okay, which further exacerbates the inflammatory cascade and makes it worse. With low levels of MSH, the pituitary starts making less ADH hormone, antidiuretic hormone, leading to thirst and frequent urination and susceptibility to electrical shocks from static electricity. It seems to cause salt buildup on the skin. <clears throat> Reduced androgens, testosterone can happen with men. Okay, all of a sudden they're losing muscle mass, they have fatigue, they're just, they're not feeling themselves, the libido just goes to pot. Uh, they're not very manly anymore. Changes in cortisol and ACTH levels. Again, you get dysregulation, which means you know, normally ACTH goes up, causes the cortisol to go up. Just like with the ADH, when the osmolality goes up, the osmo ADH should go up, but they become dysregulated. They don't respond the way they're supposed to. <clears throat> this has all happened at the pituitary, hormone, uh, pituitary level within the brain as a result of the damage that these cytokines are doing. <clears throat> 
patients should avoid steroid supplements such as prednisone whenever they can because this will also interfere with the problem. You'll get prolonged illnesses going on. The white blood cells lose their regulation of cytokine response so that recovery from other illnesses, infections, etc. can be slowed. The other gastrointestinal problems, you can get leaky gut, malabsorption in the gut, resulting diarrhea. The leaky gut lets proteins and things across the gut barrier, which can then cause further inflammation. You think of the gliadin sensitivity. That can also happen with not just wheat protein, but lots of other proteins. And there are tests that can be done looking for that. With the low levels of MSH, you also get chronic pain. Okay. You don't get very good sleep. You get non-restorative, non-restful sleep. Okay. All of this is due to damage to the MSH system in the pituitary and the hypothalamus. And all these different things, according to this diagram, as you can see, are all caused directly due to the reduced MSH. So if we can figure out how to get that MSH up, a lot of these other things will improve. The key to getting the MSH up, however, involves treating all the different things that caused it. So again, this is a very complicated disease. Very few doctors want to go to the trouble of learning about all of this. It's brand new, revolutionary at this point, as I'm recording this slide in 2017. But I think it's going to take a long time for the general medical community to catch on, even though there's lots of good peer-reviewed article journals on this, journal articles on this. It's, it's just such a steep learning curve, and it's very, very intensive medicine. It takes a long time to see these patients. Insurance doesn't properly reimburse for the amount of time that the physician is taking or with these folks. It, it's, it's, it's really, it's a death sentence for the people that have it. It will cause great suffering, and it will shorten lifespans. So there is a way to reverse every step on the SERS protocol and reverse the progression of this disease, restoring health. But it requires very careful attention. It's very lab intensive medicine. Uh, these are usually very needy patients who have been told for years, oh, it's all in your head. We don't see anything wrong. Well, the reason they don't see anything wrong is they're not doing the right tests. Some of the testing here is very, very esoteric academic testing. The good news is you're sick. We can find it. We can fix it. Yeah, it's in your head, but it's also in a lot of other places in your body as well. And that doesn't mean we should ignore it. You need help. We can provide that help. Let us help you.